Hey guys, what's up? Um, so today I'm going to be talking about um, how I built a million dollar subscription business with $700. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Kamaj Silva. I was uh, born in Sri Lanka, um, migrated to Canada. I'll, I'll go through some of the businesses I'm involved with. Um, so Sneaker Tub Doc. Um, Sneaker Tub is a subscription based um, footwear platform. Um, I recently um, exited the company, sold the company to uh, Milk Toronto is another company I started, which is um, a retail company. We um, we are a brand, uh, like we, we are our own brand and we sell like other people's merchandise as well. Um, direct um, retail partnership, um, a licensing partnership with New Era, um, MLB, NBA, uh, and and uh, NHL and NFL through New Era. Um, so Dairy Club uh, is pretty similar to Milk Toronto, another um, another headwear company with the same licenses. Um, Retro Sneaker Club is uh, pretty much similar to Sneaker Tub. Um, I basically built Sneaker Tub's um, own competitor uh, before I exited the company and made sure Sequence Commerce is, um, so I, and the head of creative for Sequence Commerce. Uh, it's a Canadian-based uh, digital agency. We deal uh, mainly with Amazon and Shopify customers. Um, um, so, so today, what I want to go through is uh, how I basically uh, built a million-dollar company with the least amount of money. So I'll, I'll talk about, um, I, I don't have a presentation ready, so I just usually like to uh, babble on. Uh, so I'll talk about like how I got there, um, my film marketing career, uh, the big layoff, the $700 startup, um, idea for Sneak It Up, and uh, how I was able to um, come up with the idea, get wholesale accounts, and basically start the company. Um, so I basically got my start in the film business. Um, I graduated uh, with a postgrad degree in film marketing. I've been in the film industry for a while um, before um, jumping into my entrepreneurship journey. Um, so five years into my film career, the big layoff happens. Um, Fox Films, uh, Fox Studios acquires a portion of E1's uh, theatrical business. Um, so basically, I go to the office on a Monday and get called into HR, and they tell me they're letting me go with like no prior warning at all. Um, so in Canada, I don't know where how how it is uh, in the rest of the world, but in Canada, basically, when they fire you, they give you a taxi check um, to get from the office to your house uh, for free. So it's all paid for by the company. Um, so I'm going home in a taxi and I look at my bank balance and all I have is $700 in my bank. And I'm like, ah, I have a choice here. Do I do my own thing or do I go down the traditional route? When am I going to start, right? Um, so I'm being a consumer of subscription boxes like Dollar Shave Club, Nerd Block, which was around, um, I think, um, during like, I think mid 2010s, like 2012, 2016, 17. I don't think that company's uh, around anymore. Um so, and I also, I'm a big fan of sneakers. So um, I looked around at Google for uh, around for a sneaker subscription service and there's nothing out there. So I decided to marry the two ideas of like subscription box and sneakers together. And voila, sneakertub.com is born. So um, sneakertub.com was the world's first sneaker subscription service. So all you guys are here for is probably to wonder how I built this company, right? So. Um, I'm, I'm going to learn to do everything myself. Obviously, I don't have... So I go on YouTube, learn how to make a website, um, learn influencer marketing. Um, and like my advice to um, like most young entrepreneurs is you don't have to pay for master classes or buy someone's courses. Uh, everything you need is available right there on the internet for free. So like as long as you look or know where to look or find out where to look, um, all that information is available for free. So don't ever pay for anything. Um, so we're talking month one, uh, I get about 20 uh, orders. And at this point, like I'm just packing out of my garage, um, but I hit up every blog. So um, basically did like a crash course on PR, like watch a couple of YouTube videos. And, and obviously my film marketing background um, helped me a lot as well. So I hit up every blog, uh, IG account, influence in Toronto, 
uh, that's uh, either fashion related, sneaker related, or like general blogs like Blogteo. Um, Blogteo is a big one in Toronto. Um, so I get picked up by Blogteo, and uh, Blogteo features Sneaker Tap. Um, so overnight, the subscriptions hit 100. I'm like, damn, how can I fulfill these orders, right? Um, at this at this point, I was just hitting up um, like the Nike outlet or the Adidas outlet. Would, like 20 pairs of shoes, it's like very manageable. Um, so I, I, I used to just flip shoes and put them in my packages. So after the initial 100 subs um, that basically um, – came overnight i needed to figure out how how the hell do i do this on a monthly basis because i can't haul around hundreds of sneakers in my car um from outlets every month it's just not practical right um so i figure out i need wholesale accounts um i start reaching out to like you know like general info at adidas.com info at new newbalance.com and i just don't hear back crickets um so i'm like oh there must be like another way of um, doing this um, so I do a bit, bit of research for like a couple of days and I, I find out there's this sales hierarchy where there's a, a regional, like every region or province has a sales director, um, a, a sales team under them and a sales rep for each specific brand. Um, so I find this out. Um, so I, the, the first, uh, brand I approached was Puma. Um, I found out this uh, sales reps like name and phone number from somewhere from some directory uh, from some like uh, I think uh, it's like a sales um, like it, it was like a website for like sales people like an internal website but for some for some reason it was public like an association for the sales reps um, so Angie Hollins was this lady's name uh, I still talk to Angie uh, she, she's not with Puma anymore uh, but um, so I, I I find a phone number I find her email, just spam the hell out of her. I keep calling her. Um, and I called her so much, I think she blocked me. Uh, so I started calling her from like another number. So like that's the kind of like approach or like hustle you kind of need um, to get shit done. Um, so Angie basically finally picks up the phone and she's like, oh, maybe this guy's probably on or something. And she decides to um, give me a chance. Um, she gives me a meeting. I present my idea. She still doesn't understand like the subscription model, obviously, because no one has done it in sneakers. Um, sneakers is like uh, at that point was it wasn't as big as this. I don't think even StockX was probably around, but like in its infancy, I'm talking 2015, 14, 16. Um, yeah, I think I think StockX was around though. Um, but like this whole like they were stuck still they were still stuck in like the old ages of traditional retail um so so i i explained the idea she decides to give me a chance uh and so that's how i got my like first brand by being like really persistent and uh, not giving up um so that that made me like having puma on board made me approach other brands and uh, that proved that it was like a legit business model and i, I was able to open pretty much every account there is so um i'm just gonna go through some stuff basically um uh it's around how to start a subscription box like uh, i would say like the seven top things to consider when you're starting a subscription box um so pretty much that was my story but this is like how you can start a subscription box basically um so first you need to come up with like a subscription box idea um uh, research competitors create a buyer persona so like with any customer based business you'll need to understand your potential customers like with subscription boxes depending on what you're selling in a subscription box that customer may change um so develop you have to develop a prototype box to kind of help you understand which route you're taking so like uh, you can understand which companies you want to partner with suppliers or like select specific products um, online presence is massive because subscriptions are, I would say, pff, most of the time they're online businesses. They're not like physical. Um, so you need like a great social media presence um, and an effective way of reaching your customers. Um, and this will, this will either make or break your success. Um, pricing is really important in subscriptions because most of the time people come to subscription box to uh, get 
a service that's value added or a better bang for their buck in um uh yeah so a better bang for their buck for sure um so and the last step is to start selling so um coming up with an idea for a subscription box right um subscription box ideas aren't difficult uh if you browse the comp competition the trick is uh finding a market that's not oversaturated so once you have a few ideas um look at the products that will fit in the box and get creative uh think about branding uh, monthly themes because themes are like huge in subscription boxes um as long as you can stay fresh and consistent and provide good value your customers will stay with you um target audiences are important too and uh with 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 uh with sneakers like we're always we were always having trouble of like stock issues because it's it's not it's like technically um size six to size like 13 so it's like very different sizes a lot of skews and you need to come up with like fresh sneakers every month so it's a uh, it was really difficult to manage so you need to you need to figure those out pretty much uh very early on i would say uh, so competition when you research competition um a few things to look at is how does each competitor price their subscription box right so um for me it was very different because um i was pretty much how does each competitor price their subscription boxes um how many boxes are you competing with uh what comes it uh and how can you make your box different and better than your competition that's basically like researching your uh competitors um with us we didn't have any competitors at all um so we were technically competing with your traditional like online retail it can make or break your success so ask yourself who's your ideal potential customer um i mean how i kind of did it is gave the customers um like personas names habits personal backgrounds motives it's like a little fun thing to do um like even negative triggers right like um i i, I basically it's like writing like a film uh, like a script for a film because i come kind of come from a film background too so like um i kind of gave the buyers persona so like pick a target age range education level relationship status like um and income career status and disposable income and those are some of the stuff to uh, consider i know we only have 20 minutes so i'm going to like run through this pretty fast um developing a prototype box uh they're a very uh big um skincare and like makeup brand for brown people um so like you know conversations with them um i know they've been uh included in a lot of subscription boxes so um you can uh, approach uh depending on which kind of box you're doing you can approach different um suppliers or brands to uh, actually get samples so you don't have to pay for them when you're starting out so like select uh, so next i guess select your box you want to pick the boxes with the right size color quality uh, all of those, I think, like presentation is everything uh, when it comes to subscription boxes. Um, and the box you receive is often the most significant part of the user experience. So it's very important to your customer satisfaction. Um, you can think of things like, um, you know, what kind of message do you want to uh, convey through the packaging? Or like, is your box recyc uh, recyclable? Uh, I would say aim for at least 30 to 40% profit margin. Uh, and to make sure your co company is sustainable um, in, in the long run. So you'll need to consider like product cost, box cost, uh, packaging material cost, shipping, postage, um, transaction, e-commerce fees, uh, software fees, and um, PPC and advertising costs. Um, so if you're just starting out, I mean, um, I started in 2015. So the, the landscape was much different. You could just... Um, build like your first few years or based on influencer marketing but i think the market's like a little saturated now um and you don't get uh, enough bang for your buck necessarily with influencer marketing unless you know to do it right um so yeah consider those things setting up your online presence you're selling in the online world so your um your social uh online presence is everything so instagram facebook TikTok. Uh, if they aren't already active, uh, make sure you activate them and start posting at least five to eight times a day, as Gary Vee says. Uh, I, I follow Gary Vee um, 
uh, Gary is one of my like uh, favorite entrepreneurs, so I like, follow his advice pretty closely. Um, so interact with your audience. Make sure you market yourself to your target audience. Um, it's also like a good time to design and schedule your marketing companies. Uh, sorry, marketing campaigns. Scheduling is everything. In if you're posting five to eight times a day. Um, build a great website, decide whether you want to sign up with like a subscription platform um, or uh, there, there's, there are a few subscription platforms. I think Upgrade Draw is one of them. Shopify has third party apps that uh, uh, that could run subscriptions for you. So obviously, like I've used Credit Joy and um, Shopify both. Um, Sneaker Tub was on Credit Joy. Uh, Retro Sneaker Club is on Shopify, Shopify being my favorite so far. Um, yeah, I think the last thing is start selling. You may have an idea, but if you don't put it out to the world, like nothing will ever happen. So I think uh, taking that leap and um, putting your business out there is the best thing you can do for yourself. Uh, just because your ideas in your head are on like a presentation in a laptop, that's not going to make you move forward um so when you start selling i think a few things you should consider is which marketing channels are working the best for you so you can use uh ga and a bunch of analytics tools to kind of figure that out in i would say the first six to eight months of your business um how can you improve your fulfillment process when you're down the line uh if your self-fulfilling is the right time to um outsource to a fulfillment company like believe me that like changes your life uh when you don't uh touch products or, or you have a lot of time to uh, do other things with uh with the company um what feedback are you receiving from your subscribers like you can change your business accordingly uh how can you improve customer satisfaction should you consider a referral program um or also another thing to consider i would say like within three to within your first three to six months is like the remember the the buyer personas that you built um earlier are they still accurate or did um a different market pick up your boxes so um those are some of the few things i think you should consider starting a, a subscription box so i'm going to end with um something someone said i don't know who said it the best way to market uh, is the best marketing strategy doesn't feel like marketing. So 